Wasabis, this is Ruby from Couch Wasabi. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. So for this Thursday, let me share with you the things that I use or the equipments that I use in creating my YouTube videos. Also, my editing software. Basically, the things that I do to maintain this channel. If this is something that you want to see, please keep on watching. Okay, so this is going to be a casual chit-chat session. I will be tackling the questions that I normally get from bloggers who are interested to uh, dive in to the world of YouTube. I normally get asked by my friends during events questions like what equipment do you use? What editing software do you use? Right now, I am using my Huawei P910 to shoot all my videos. I find that my Huawei P910 provides a better video quality than my iPhone. I haven't really invested in the camera yet, but I am thinking of getting Canon G7X just because it's what most YouTubers use. But Chris is suggesting for me to get a Sony, so I'm still thinking about that. I would probably be buying that in a couple of months now. So I recently got my background stand, which I bought for 2,500 pesos. It's a 6x6 feet of professional background stand. The ones that you see in photo studios, it's the same thing. You can DIY this by uh, getting PVC pipes and building it on your own, but I'm not really into DIY. I'd rather like pay for something and buy it just for convenience. So I got this just recently in Quezon City and it's really very useful for me because I get to shoot anywhere I want and just use the natural light. Which brings me to my second topic. Do you need a professional lighting system? Not really. Um, to be honest, most YouTubers started with the natural light or the sunlight or their windows. Right now, I'm facing this huge window and I'm just harnessing the power of nature. It provides a very good lighting, in fact. So you just have to plan your timing when you should shoot your videos. Don't shoot at noon because that's where the sun is straight up and the lighting is just too harsh. So most beauty bloggers would invest in a ring light. I haven't done so but I am planning to. To be honest, it, the ring light is something that I've been stalling on purchasing. I've been wanting to buy it maybe for 2-3 to three years now but I haven't really <laughs> bought it. Not that I don't have the budget for it but I just don't feel the need to get it for now because I mean, I'm fine with this lighting. I'm fine with my other lighting and my other setup. So there's no need for me to buy a ring light versus this background stand. You know, I find this background stand more useful than the ring light because with this background stand, I can just set up anywhere in my house where I see a good lighting. So here's a good lighting. I can just set up my background and I can just shoot anywhere. So for me, this one, it's a better investment than getting a ring light. Third question, what editing software do I use? I use Filmora. I purchased a registered version of Filmora for $60, I think, and that's a lifetime registration. I know you can also purchase Adobe Premiere for the same price. I'm not really sure which program is better. All I know is that Adobe Premiere also provides like good videos stuff but I went for Filmora because I find it more beginner friendly. I was able to dabble into Adobe when I was younger because it is what we use in school for editing videos. I took up advertising so we had a little touch point on video editing. Back then, I really didn't like it. My sister who does video editing works for ABS-CBN before and she graduated from La Salle with a degree in communication arts. You know, she's very into Adobe Premiere and she does really amazing video editing work. And uh, I can see that it's a little more technical versus using a Filmora software. That's why I went with Filmora because I, I feel that Filmora is just one step above Windows Movie Maker. If you're starting, you can go with Windows Movie Maker. It's fine. A lot of other YouTubers are doing that, but I just find the movie maker a little too masyadong halatang beginner so I didn't want that. I opted to invest in Filmora and purchase it at $60 for a lifetime of 
use, which is not bad for the price. And uh, it updates automatically by itself from time to time. And with Filmora, there are a lot of effects that you can use that looks like something that you can get from an Adobe Premiere or a Final Cut Pro, I don't know. Now, if you are a Mac user, then you get a better deal because I heard that iMovie is also a good editing tool and for my friends who are using a Mac notebook and uh, most probably they will be using the iMovie, I can see that their videos are really neat and beautiful and all that for a, you know, for a very simple editing software. So, it depends on you. I have been using a Windows laptop. I, I don't have any plans on diving into a Mac. Because for one, I find Mac notebooks so expensive and I don't have any plans of changing my computer usage orientation just to, you know, get that iMovie. Uh, I stick with my Windows laptop. In fact, I just bought a new laptop recently. So this is my new Asus notebook. My old one broke down, the green one. I'm sure you've seen it in my videos, like in my travel videos because I bring my laptop along to edit. The old one lasted for six years. Nasira lang yung power pin niya. So, having it fixed would cost me around 4,500 pesos. So, I, I said, okay, I'll just buy a new one. So, I got this other, or I got this new Asus notebook. My old one is also an Asus. It's, an, it's the Asus KS43 or K43S, something like that. And it's really nice. It's in metallic green, my favorite color. It's, I call it my Couch Wasabi laptop because it's a green laptop and I put it in a nice pink bag. Now, this one is an FX550i. So this is sort of a gaming laptop. It's a beginner gaming laptop. I got this for 46,000 pesos. And this one comes in a... Wait, let me just read what's in here. So this one comes with a 1TB memory with 1-8GB solid state drive. It has 4GB memory in it. I upgraded it to 12 gigs for another 4,000 pesos. And uh, this one runs in AMD. It has quad core and blah blah blah. And has a video card that's it's called I think R7 Radeon. Okay. Basically this thing costs for 50 grand because it's 46 for this thing and the upgrade was 4,000. Would I recommend this? I wouldn't recommend for you to get an AMD if you're using Filmora. This is something that I wasn't able to research on before buying this. Okay, turns out there are like editing softwares are kind of sensitive with their video card and all that. This version has an i7 counterpart for the same price. I went with the AMD version because the AMD version has the additional 128GB of solid state drive that I wanted to take advantage of. So I went with AMD. Sadly, when I went home and installed all my, you know, editing stuff and installed Filmora, I noticed that Filmora is more compatible with an Intel processor. In fact, there are times that my Filmora would crash with this AMD laptop and I can't change the drive as to where my videos would be saved. Every time I try to change the drive from C to another drive, my Filmora would crash. So that's a little annoying but I can't do anything about it. It's too late for me to get to know that because I've already purchased it and you can't just return this and exchange for an i7 because of that issue. So. I guess I'll have to stick with it. Overall, the laptop is very fast. What I like about it, it runs in Windows 10, so turning it on and shutting it down is pretty fast. Yun lang. My only problem is it crashes from time to time. Also, there are issues with Adobe Photoshop. Like, there are times when I want to use Adobe Photoshop, hindi nagapir yung image na gusto kong i edit. So, that's really annoying and frustrating. I haven't really found a solution for that. I think it's still because of the video card or the. AMD R7 Radeon and all that. I was initially attracted to get this because I've read that um, with this uh, Filmora it has this something called GPU accelerator which makes you 
render your videos faster than normal. Now, the only problem is that the AMD Radeon R7 is not really compatible with that feature yet. So, usad lang, hindi kasama yung R7. But there are other AMD, I think the more expensive and more advanced AMD video card and processor is compatible with that Filmora feature that you can use. It's just sad that this one isn't. So, if I were you, uh, I'd rather go for i7 or Intel if you plan to use uh, Filmora. And I've heard most other editing software would run, would run better with an Intel processor. So, that's something that you should take note of. My old laptop was an i3 and that i3, it, you know, it, it was seamless. It was great. Kaya nga, I was sort of nanghihinayang to let that go because I really love that laptop and even after 6 years, it's still running pretty fast for an old processor for an i3. Next question, how do I find time in shooting my videos? Um, to be honest, I normally shoot my videos, sometimes 3 videos in, in just one day. I just change my clothes para mukha lang siyang iba-ibang araw. I normally shoot anytime kung like sometimes there's an urge for me to shoot a certain topic so you know I would do my makeup and shoot there are times that I have to plan for some of the videos that I intend to shoot so there are, there are times that would take me weeks just to produce that video and there are times na parang spur of the moment lang I just want to shoot a video and I just want to talk about this blah 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 so you know it, it varies depends on you What's important is that you have to be very consistent with your channel. Like, you have to consistently upload a video or two in a week. To be honest, one video in a week is not enough. Two or three would probably be the average. If you can upload, if you can shoot and upload daily, that would be better. But it's tedious, especially if you have work or especially if you're still studying. So, my advice is. Two or three videos a week would be fine because that's what most other YouTubers do anyway. Starting your YouTube channel would probably give you a lot of hesitations or like you feel na maraming barrier. But to be honest, hindi naman. It took me I think three years to be able to have the guts to start my channel. Three years ago, a lot of my fellow vloggers are telling me, oh, why won't you start your YouTube channel? Even my boyfriend was telling me, why won't you start your YouTube channel? That time, I normally say, oh, no, it's not for me. Talking in front of the camera is not for me. Blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? I ate my own words. Um, at that time, kasi I was just, I think I was just shy to talk. But I realized that you will get the hang of it. You can notice, like in my first few videos, I normally look at the viewfinder like this and it's really annoying because I'm like talking to something else. But as you go along, you will start to learn to make eye contact with the lens and you know, in turn, making eye contact with the people that you're talking to. So, ganun. Sana yan lang yan. Forget all the hesitations that you have. Yung mga questions na, oh, wala akong professional camera to shoot myself. Wala akong mic to shoot myself. Blah, blah, blah. If you want it, there's always a way. Like me, I'm just using my phone and it works pretty well. No wala akong background, I just find a clean wall in my house and I shoot there. And I, you know, sometimes I still like the aesthetics of the clean wall than having this background. But right now, I just want to use this background because, you know, para sulit naman yung pinili ko. So there, overall, I just want to encourage you to dive into the world of YouTube. If this feeling na, hey, I want to start a channel, Blah, blah, blah. Why won't you? Start with topics that interest you. Like me, I started with vaping. Because it's something that I wanted to learn at that time. I wanted to learn those vaping tricks at that time when I started it. And now, I've diversified into reviewing electronics, gadgets, and beauty. Because, in fact, I was a beauty blogger for 8 years. So, it's sort of natural for me to dive into beauty blogging. And it's something that I have enjoyed for the past decade already. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And if you have questions for me as to how you should start a YouTube channel or whatever, you can leave your comments down below or your questions down below or you can hit me up through Twitter, Instagram, 
or Snapchat, I would be more than happy to give you like my tips and my personal experiences in starting my own YouTube channel. Keep in mind, I'm not a professional. I'm just doing this for fun and guys, I'm just barely over 500 subscribers. So, <laughs> wala lang. Fun fun lang to give you uh, beginner's advice or, or whatnot. Anyway, let's catch up soon and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!